Man, this Vitaly Kravtsov thing is really, really weird. We already made a video talking about the entire update, if you haven't known already. Vitaly Kravtsov was a ninth overall pick by the New York Rangers at the 20, what was it, 2018 NHL entry draft? I think it was 2018. Yeah, it was. So he was their guy back then, and... He has had a really strange development curve so far. Up and down in Hartford, up and down in the KHL, eventually splitting the load last year, getting 20 games with the Rangers, and having a total of 4 points as a 6'2", 187 right-wing player. The entire update we've made in the previous video goes over how he apparently wants out, and how the Rangers have given him and his party the permission to speak to other clubs, trying to facilitate a trade. Now, this all came because the Rangers did not end up starting Kravtsov in their lineup, they sent him down to Hartford in the AHL, and he's refusing to report. So a few things have been established earlier on. First, he is not on the lineup. The Rangers do not think he's good enough to play in the NHL right now. Either that, or they feel like his skill set just isn't useful in their current structure. Secondly, he is not going to the AHL to play for Hartford once again. Those are the two points I want you to keep in mind as we read this newest Darren Dreger tweet from a few days ago, just going over a brief update. There's good interest in Vitaly Kravtsov, he says. I'm told he is willing to play in the AHL with another NHL club, and he would consider a one-year agreement around his qualifying offer for next season. However, the Rangers are expecting the potential of top six talent in return via a trade. And this is kind of where things get weird. If Vitaly Kravtsov is not willing to play for the Hartford Wolfpack, but is willing to play for another AHL team, there are some things we have to talk about there. And furthermore, if the Rangers do not think he is good enough to play on their roster, but they're expecting top six talent in return, you kind of have to get your head scratching a little bit there as well. And so it is kind of contradictory how both parties are going about it, but it just brings up even more questions now, doesn't it? What exactly did the Rangers do to Vitaly Kravtsov that has gotten him so up in arms that he is willing to play in other AHL organizations, but not with the Rangers? Have they really been treating him that poorly? We already spoke a few years ago about how the mixed signals came into play and how he was isn't really getting a consistent showing of what exactly the Rangers wanted to do with his development. But is it that bad that now he's like, man, I really just don't want to be here. It's New York or bust. Screw Hartford. If I'm going to go to the AHL, I'd rather play for some other organization. If that is to be the case, then I don't know what to believe at this point, because according to Rick Carpaniello in his article yesterday, this is what he said about why Kravtsov was sent down. He was told in no uncertain terms that he needed to go down and work on his conditioning after his lower body injury during training camp. If he did so, he would be back up quickly. And if this is the case, then my immediate instinct is, wow, what an overreaction. You want to trade from the team just because they tell you you need to work on your conditioning after you got injured? I mean, maybe this is a Kravtsov thing because we had some stuff in the KHL last year as well where it was somewhat similar, but... We still have the previous problems that presented itself with Leish Anderson. Those were a big deal as well, especially since he also was a top 10 pick by the Rangers, except he was 2017, Kravtsov was 2018. Furthermore, if the New York Rangers are going to go out there and expect top six talent in return, it really kind of gets me confused as to how they plan to deploy Kravtsov in their lineup regardless. Because people are talking about roles, you know, player roles. Do you want a sniper? Do you want a winger who can score? Do you want a gritty physical guy? It's why you still have guys that you could say are not as offensively capable as Kravtsov, like Ryan Reeves and Sammy Blay and Julian Gauthier, still in your lineup today. And for the most part, when you lost Pavel Buchnevich in that trade last year to the Blues, all of a sudden, there's a little bit of an opening for a guy who plays a style like Kravtsov to slip in and fill that crack. He's a guy who can score, he's a guy with some skill, and he's not really the most physical player. But... You take a look at the top six that the Rangers do indeed have. Lafreniere, Kako, Zabanajad, Kreider, Artemi Panarin, and Strom as well. Sure, you could say that Kravtsov is not as good as any of those guys. But if you trade Vitaly Kravtsov for top six talent, are you going to all of a sudden take out one of Zabanajad or Kreider or Panarin or whatever from your top six and slip in that new guy you get instead? 
if you were going to do that, then why would you not have just done that with Kravtsov in the first place? You're so adamant on character roles in New York that you want these bottom six grinders to be your guys, and you like Philip Cheadle because he can do that stuff while also producing points as well, and you don't like Kravtsov because he can't do the physical stuff. What exactly is the plan if you go out there and you acquire another top six player for Kravtsov? If you're so set and defined in what your top six is already, it would be difficult to justify acquiring a player who is top six caliber skill while also having that grittiness that you can just place in the middle six or in the bottom six whenever you please. Not everybody can be a Tom Wilson in the NHL, and even fewer of those types of guys even go on the trade market in general. So, it's so weird to me just looking at this situation because it is kind of just a cut-and-paste thing from Leish Anderson. If it's gotten so bad that Kravtsov would rather play in the AHL for any other team, then you start to have to wonder, okay, it's the same question from before. And I think it was Larry Brooks who wrote about it and asked the question like this in his recent New York Post article, is this just the New York Rangers going out there and drafting the two out of however many guys that have been top 10 picks in the past decade who have had problems like these where they're unwilling to play with the team and they're frustrated with how their development is going? Or is this a constant with the Rangers? You didn't have any problems with Cheadle, you didn't have any problems with Kako or Lafreniere, but you have problems now with Kravtsov as well as with Anderson in the past. Is it the poor track record of drafting that is the problem here? Or is it the Rangers way of developing? We know last year things were weird under David Quinn. Kako and Lafreniere were being played with some pretty whack line mates and you had a whole bunch of diversity throughout the lineup that honestly made the Rangers seem more like a college team rather than an NHL team in the way that they were coached, but all of a sudden now it's like, okay, Gerard Gallant is here, and it's his choice ultimately as to how the lineup is going to be deployed, what the roles of these players are going to be, and you just take what the GM gives you in terms of a roster, don't you? And now you take a look at Kravtsov and the trade market, there's no way he is going to go out there and get a top six caliber return absolutely no way. His value is so low after all this stuff has gone public, and because of all this stuff, I would not be surprised in the slightest if the Rangers just were not able to find a trade. Drager said that there's a lot of interest in Kravtsov, but no team is going to go out there and say, okay, yeah, here's a top six player for Vitaly Kravtsov, whom we're going to place in, I don't know, our farm team, and he's going to be okay with going there. It would be a backwards move to make that kind of trade if you are any other team aside from the Rangers. So, for New York, I just don't really know what exactly is going to go down. Sure, there could be a trade done in the next, like, 24 hours or whatever, and I'll look like a fool for making this video, but... It is just kind of strange to me, everything that is coming out. Kravtsov would be willing to play in the AHL just as long as it's not for Hartford, and the New York Rangers do not think he's good enough to play on their team, but they want a top six return for him. I mean, it says here the potential of top six talent in return, so I don't know if that's another prospect that has a top six ceiling or if that's a top six guy right now. One thing's for sure though, Kravtsov, in my opinion, does have middle six scoring potential, so if you really wanted to boost his value, you would probably try to play him in the NHL, right? Play him with the team, see how good he can be, see him score five, six, seven, eight goals in the first, I don't know, month and a half of the season, and then try to trade him after? Like, you're not going to get a top six return for a guy who is not good enough to crack your team, and who very openly does not want to play for your team. It's so strange how this entire thing comes a year after Leish Anderson that I think the New York Rangers are going to be the new team to start keeping your eyes out, you know? Just pay attention to in how they develop their prospects and really put the spotlight on their top guys. You know the Rangers have a really good prospect pool, or excuse me, not prospect pool, Lafreniere and Kako are not prospects. I mean, mostly like under 23 core in terms of Keandre Miller and Adam Fox and Niels Lundqvist and Jones and Laurie Pajaniemi and all the other guys they have in their system. They have a lot of good young talent, but some of these names have been mismanaged to the point where they want to leave, like Kravtsov and Anderson. Other names have been mismanaged on the roster to the point where they definitely are not performing up to expectations, like Kako, like Lafreniere. Sure, some of them are great, Adam Fox comes to mind, but either way, keep your eyes out on the Rangers and how exactly this Kravtsov thing will go down. Talk to me in the comments what do you think about this entire situation. Am I wrong to say it's weird? I explain my entire thought process over here. Is there something wrong with the Rangers in that they're able to find these guys that just end up having problems with their team? Or is there something wrong with the Rangers that causes guys to feel this way? Let me know in the comments what your opinions are. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.